when is foot and mouth disease vaccination profitable in endemic settings? Many endemic countries are highly dependent on foot and mouth disease vaccination for disease control, sometimes paid for by the state, sometimes funded by the farmer. But the financial justification of foot and mouth disease vaccination is often poorly understood. The decision maker should understand uh, if investing in vaccination is going to deliver a positive return on that investment, regardless of who's making this payment. Farmers are going to be particularly interested in farm level uh, impacts if they're going to invest in it. Governments will also be interested in the wider population benefits of vaccination, reducing overall population incidence. To assess the case for a foot foot and mouth disease vaccination at the farm level, we developed a simple cost calculator for cattle farms. So this partial budget calculator assessed FMD impact on a farm income comparing a scenario where foot and mouth disease vaccination was not performed to one where it was performed. There are various inputs from various data sources, herd size, probability of having an outbreak, a portion of cattle affected if you do have an outbreak, uh, cost of vaccine and the vaccine effectiveness, the proportion of cases before that vaccination. You also need to estimate the impact of FMD in cattle in cases. So what was the average milk losses per animal affected? Losses from deaths, abortion, reduced fertility, treatment, traction in some places, uh, feed costs and delayed finishing, and also culling from the sale of animals to salvage value that have its productivity has been jeopardized. So essentially for a specific setting, we look at the average income lost from FMD's impact on a herd without vaccination per year and compare it to the average income lost from foot and mouth disease for a herd that is vaccinating. We estimate the yes, this impact income lost by looking at what's the probability of a herd experiencing an outbreak in that year, then say if it is affected, what proportion of the herd will be affected, and combine that with the average costs per case. In vaccinated herds, we adjust the proportion of the herd affected according to the vaccine effectiveness, and we also factor in vaccination costs. And the output, we have the change in farm level income per head of cattle they have in the herd when vaccinating. So a benefit cost ratio. There's some simplifications. We don't include a two dose primary course, but could easily change that. Uh, some impacts are hard to estimate. At the moment, it's just a deterministic model, but we will make it stochastic to capture more uncertainty in, in the future. Incidence is hard to estimate in some settings. Uh, our results, results are presented for an average herd, um, so it doesn't tell you the extremes and the vari full variation from herd to herd, uh, but we do adjust it for herd size to make it comparable. Uh, we don't account for the fact that vaccinated animals may still have clinical disease, but that may be milder with a lower impact. We're just adjusting for the change it has on the proportion of animals in a herd that have clinical foot and mouth. And we have a single foot and mouth disease uh, vaccine effectiveness. We don't adjust for number of doses. Um, we, we have not changed the, the likelihood, the probability of a herd is experiencing an outbreak according to its vaccination status um, more later. Um, and it's only considering farm level effects. Uh, we do not look at a wider population level effect of a mass vaccination campaign achieving herd immunity and reducing incidence. But for many countries in early PCP stage, incidence remains around constants fluctuating. Um, and so the farm level decision whether or not to vaccinate is very much what we're looking at. First case study in Nepal, smallholder dairy systems. Um, data collected in the ERFMD training courses. These are small holder dairies, uh, and the impact on milk production is high. Also, impact through mortality is surprisingly high, about 10% of adults, 40% of young stock, and so an overall cost, average cost per case 
of over $400. Herds are small, 2.6. If they have a, an outbreak, about 70% of animals are affected. Uh, about one in 10 herds will be affected, so the probability for any one herd is 10% and of having an outbreak a year. Vaccine effectiveness, we put at 70, but we explore that later on, um, 70%. Cost of the vaccine, about $1.3. And there are two doses a year we're including. And in this scenario, vaccination delivers a, a clear benefit. So $47 per herd, $18 per head of cattle in the herd if you invest in vaccination. It's your positive effect on your farm income. And actually, even if vaccination effects vaccine effectiveness was as low as 10%, then you're still that's your break-even point. Anything above that, you start to get a positive. Uh, effect on farm income because of this high susceptibility and relatively cheap vaccine costs. If vaccination also reduces the chance of a herd having an outbreak, not just the size of the outbreak if it does have one, which is fairly expectable, um, and that, that risk of a herd outbreak is reduced in proportion to the vaccine effectiveness, then the argument for vaccination becomes even stronger. Other studies have also looked at smallholder dairy in endemic countries and found a, a good case. Looking at pastoralists in northern Tanzania, reference is listed. There, the impact on unvaccinated animals, so if an unvaccinated animal has foot and mouth disease, uh, the losses are much lower than this smallholder dairy system. So milk losses only, for the average case, $5, deaths relatively low, they're more resistant breeds. Um, so overall, average cost per case, $31. Herds are large, about 85 animals. Incidents, 44% once a herd has an outbreak, which is, sounds high, but it's much lower than Nepal. But 75% of herds are experiencing an outbreak in a year, so a very high herd level incidence. Uh, vaccine effectiveness, we put it at 50%. Uh, there are more challenges than vaccines in East Africa. And vaccine costs three dollars per dose, and animals receiving two doses a year. So with these input parameters, we actually find that herds will be losing money by investing in vaccination. So the average herd would be seventy-six dollars worse off, about a dollar ahead of cattle. But if vaccine cost per dose reduces to two point five percent, two point five dollars, and there was uncertainty about this, sometimes. People paid as much as $10 for a dose, sometimes as low as two. Um, well, once it's $2.5 and lower, you start to get a positive return on farm income. Back with a $3 a dose, actually, if vaccine effectiveness is 60% or above, then you start to get a positive return on farm income. If vaccination also reduces the probability of a herd having an outbreak, um, Roughly in line with the back, well in line with the vaccine effectiveness, then also that changes it from your estimate from being a negative effect on our farm income to being a, a positive effect. So the case for vaccination in this setting is much less clear cut and more uncertain. Rushton looking at farm level return of vaccination in extensive systems other elsewhere in the world uh, or found uh, a negative farm level return. In conclusion, in some et endemic settings, farmer investment in foot and mouth disease vaccination delivers high returns. But in others, the cost of vaccination may be greater than the resulting reduction in foot and mouth disease impact due to low disease impact on cases and uh, lower incidence sometimes. Considering this can help identify how to target foot and mouth disease control to sectors where it is most profitable when designing control campaigns. It will also show where public funding will be needed to compensate for a lack of farmer incentives to control for mouse disease. Thank you.